Alright, usually I script my videos out, except for like the update videos or anything, but this one I wanted to just give my honest stream of conscious thoughts about all the reveals we got in the 6.0 uh, showcase, fan fest, whatever you want to call it. And I'm just going to go through things. I have a list of notes here to give me topics, and I'm going to be as spoiler free as possible, but when I talk about the story part, I'll be spoiling stuff, of course, just because there's no avoiding it. But if you've not gotten to the current expansion or whatever, I'll be as spoiler-free as possible. And if you can't look at the, the, the video bar, I'll have each section broken up. Skip the story section if you are not currently caught up. But otherwise, I will try to be as spoiler-free as possible. But uh, yeah, let's get started with... The, the title, I guess. Endwalker. I mean, without getting into the spoilers already, it's functional. I don't really have too much to say on the name. It's fine. The fact that it's an act, the, if we shorten it to two letters, it will be E-W, U. This is the U expansion. At, I mean, they're not thinking about that when they're naming things, but... I mean, it says what's on the tin. Or what's in the tin, I should say. It's, it's fine. It, I don't really have... I saw a lot of reaction to that being like, Oh man, that's cool. Or, oh man, that's really lame. And it's like, eh. I'm in the middle ground. I don't really have much to say about it. Besides story spoilers. And it it's fine. It It's fine. That's it. But when we get into... The next thing, the new jobs, that's where I got a lot to say. First, we have Sage, which, what the hell are those fin things? I already forgot the name, but it was just this big name that was like, new list, that's it, new list. And like, that's a mouthful, but they look cool. And it's a really interesting looking job. Like, for it to be a healer, that it looks interesting. It looks like it might have a focus on more DPS, just because of it being giant lasers. But, I mean, it's still going to be a healer in general, so we don't know. The big thing, though, and that led to a bit of speculation, was the augmenting their own abilities. I immediately saw people start suggesting that this might be the return of Cleric Stance. And for those of you who don't know, Cleric Stance was something from A Realm Reborn in Heaven's Word that would swap your mind and intelligence stat. Before, DPS for a healer was based on your intelligence stat, and healing was based off of mind. So you used both, but you could only ever get mind gear. So what Cleric Stance did was take your 500 mind and turn it into 500 intelligence but then your intelligence which was at like 50 would become 50 mind so your heals would become really weak and your dps would become really strong which a lot of people do seem to want that to come back because they they don't like how it's just oh spam healing and dps is just so simple so this would be a good way to to uh, find a middle ground. A middle ground for those people who don't care about Cleric Stance coming back, and those that do, all the people who want it back, here's your new healer, go use that, enjoy. Everyone else, you have three healers to choose from. And also, on that own, that, the, all the healers together bit, the fact that they're splitting healers down the middle, Astrologian is getting split into a more white mage focus. They're going to be white mage and Astrologian be pure healers, which basically means Knocked Ast is dead, long live Knocked Ast. Which that's going to make describing Astrologian to a new player a lot simpler, just because it's going to be more pure healer. But at the same time, I don't know, I mean... 
that basically made Astrologian be two jobs at once, and now it's only going to be the one, just because Knocked Ast and Diurnal Ast basically played the same, but you did play slightly different, and it, it was a how you felt about each sect kind of thing, whether or not you used Diurnal or Knocked in where you could. But if you got like a scholar partner, you had to do Diurnal. So there's a reason why we should get rid of the split. But I I kind of like that they're doing that split down the middle with... Just because we have four now, it's going to be two dedicated healers, two shield healers. I think that's good. I could see where people are coming from when they complain about it. And like, people are f saying Scholar is dead or whatever. But like, it's a new expansion. They might get some crazy new abilities, buffed abilities... And the fact that they're making Scholar be specifically a dedicated shield healer, that could be very good. It could mean a lot in terms of the general playability, the balance, and how good the job is. But like, in general, that's also why we don't really know anything, because it being Sage, the weapon is cool, and that could lead to a lot of cool, unique things. But we still don't really know anything about it. That short little video really did nothing for, like, actually telling us how the job is going to be. So yeah, really the focus is just on the fact that they're splitting healers down the middle. And I think that'll be good for healer balance in general. Hopefully. We'll see. More importantly, meanwhile, is the melee job. They revealed, at minimum, it's a melee job. And then also, Yoshi P did his typical shirt teasing. So, from if the shirt is about the job, our melee DPS is probably going to be Necromancer. Or potentially Templar, just because of how they connected the, the, the quote on the shirt to a movie and the director's name. But I don't think they're doing another Samu Raimi. I think this is just going to be the, like, the Skeletor is going to be the actual job and we're getting Necromancer. But that might also be a, a, a misdirection and that the shirt is actually going to be, like, related to the story that the bad guys are going to be doing Necromancy to get their way and that's their big plan. Ooh, we don't know that yet. But it's probably about the job, which means... We're going to get Necromancer as a melee DPS and hopefully be a maiming job. My hopes are still with Judge being the job, but that is highly unlikely. I would love it to be Judge, but it's probably not Judge. And then they went into the story. So this is where the spoilers are going to kick in. If you're not caught up on the story, turn away now. Okay, there's your warning. So... We're going to the moon. I don't think anyone avoided that, even if you are trying to avoid spoilers. Nobody can avoid that we're going to the moon. And the icon is literally whatever spaceship we're going to be using to get to the moon. Like, there's no avoiding that part. The thing is, though, how are we going to get to the moon? Is it going to be like, when we get to Gorlimald, whatever that giant tower is... In Garlemald is going to be how we get to the moon, and that's where the big battle is going to take place. Like, why are we going to the moon? That is, that is... The most we saw of the moon was in 3.x and all that, and all like the Ashian scenes of Elidibus on the moon. But also, Xenos is just there looking all bored still, like, Come on, let me do the fight already. I want to kill. Let me just do this already. And Fan Daniel has his secrets. Who knows what the secrets are? And they're going to be answering all the lingering questions left about the final days. What is going on with Zodiac and Hydaelyn? Are we going to kill them both? I, th I think we're going to kill them both by the end just because there can be no primals. But also, maybe killing Hydaelyn would also kill the planet, so who knows? But then maybe we become a Hydaelyn? I don't know. There's a lot of stuff they could do with that. But again, overall, they didn't really tell us anything. Yeah, like, we kind of knew that 
we were going to get everything answered, especially when 6.1, that's the new story, 6.0 is the end to the Hyteland Saga. After this, it's a brand new story, everything started by 1.0 is done, well, there is the raids, but other than the fact that there is going to be the side story raids answering some questions too, in general, it, this is it. 6.0 is the end. All of the questions have to be answered there. Sure, there could be small questions left after, but in general, they have to finish everything off. So the fact that those questions are going to be answered was kind of a given. What I'm interested in is what the new story is going to be. Are we going to the new world? Are we going to be rebuilding Garlemald and all that? What all is going to be happening? And also there's the, the beast tribe on the moon. Why is there a beast tribe on the moon? So that just says that we're going to be going there a lot and not just for a short visit. There's got to be a lot to do there. Which is got to be weird because it's the moon. But I guess that means the, the speculated Zodiac is the moon isn't quite true. He might be part of the moon, but he's not entirely the moon because if we kill the moon, because we got to kill Zodiac, then how would we get back to the moon? How would you get to the beast tribe? We wouldn't be able to. So I guess they at most answered a couple speculations, but not really much there either to be expected. They're just going to give the overview and let the story itself do the talking. And now the getting away from the story, let's talk about the new location they revealed. Rad's at Han and all of Thavnir. It was speculated for a while that we would be going there to like get help or whatever, but the fact that, that it was right is really cool. Cause like people have been really, really looking forward to getting to Thavnir and especially after Heaven's Word introduced that dress that everyone was wearing during the time. But also in general people just wanted to visit it and it looks like very Indian and it also look it looks really cool looking like uh, even the in-game render they showed looks really nice and Will be interesting to see and it's going to be the small town at like the size of Yolmore they said So what the big town is gonna be like who knows but All of Thavne I'm I'm kind of excited about that just cuz I don't know it it always intrigued me of what this random isle in the middle of nowhere was actually doing just because they do have a stake in what all happens on the mainland even if it's a tiny one so the fact that we're finally going there is pretty neat to me even if it's just a small thing and then also they showed it like being destroyed or whatever so I don't know if that's gonna be like a flashback sequence because we have, we could flash back with the Echo, or if it's going to get attacked by Xenos and Garnemald and all that. I don't know. And then they showed Anima from Final Fantasy X. I don't like Final Fantasy X all that much, but the fact that they're bringing in Anima is actually kind of cool. It looks really good. They brought on the original designer to design the Final Fantasy XIV version, and it looks cool. It's probably just going to be one of the primals we fight. Maybe it's going to be the Matanga Primal, or maybe it's going to be the Moon Primal for the Beast Tribe up there. Who knows? It might be something they summon for the big bad guy. Ooh, stuff. We'll have to see. They didn't really give anything on it except animas in the game. Look forward to it. And then they revealed the raids. The Ape Man is going to be Pandemonium. And it's gonna be based around La Habrea. So, what does that mean? Is it just gonna be Ashian based and like going into their past of the Convocation of 14? Is La Habrea somehow coming back? Even though he is very, very clearly dead, there is absolutely no way he could come back. Not even, no matter what in the lore, La Habrea is definitely dead by this point. And then the 24 man is going to be lore. I mean, a Orzian lore, I mean. Then it's like, that could be anything. It's lore that has remained a mystery. It could be something to do with Gelmora. It could be something to do with 
something elegant. It could be a lot of things. There's a lot of Eorzean lore that is technically a mystery. So that really doesn't say anything at all. But I mean, I, I at least can say the ideas have me interested. But thinking more about it and not just pure reactionary, I, I don't know. It, we need more info. That's really my thing. Just because Pandemonium, cool name, La Habrea is the theme somehow. But how is La Habrea connected at all? And then Eorzean lore means nothing, so we shall see on that as well. They're also trying something new with PvP with no role restrictions. But again, we still need more info of what is really going on. Like, it sounds interesting and might actually make Final Fantasy XIV PvP get a lot more people interested. But in general, it's like, whatever. Like, who cares? PvP really isn't a thing in this game, and unless you give us a reason to consider it a thing, I don't really know. I plan to probably give it an earnest shot, depending on what actually it is. Because, I mean, it, it does sound interesting, and depending on the rewards, I'm interested. I think the gear set they show that looks really judgy was one of the specific rewards that they were giving. Which, I kind of want that armor, but what we we have to wait and see. That's really all there is to it. Until we wait and see, there's a... Probably at the, the event in May, things will actually mean more. But, as it stands, this was a lot of teases and not a lot of substance. Except for, like, Sage was, like, the biggest thing. Though I guess there is a couple other things that they tease that are like, oh my god, this is huge. Like, the next thing isn't one of those, but it is something that they should have did before, and that's splitting up role quests into five sections instead of just four. Because that's literally how the game works. There are five roles. There's tank, there's healer, there's melee, there's ranged, and then there's mage. Ranged and Mage are not the same, both in the game programming and, I guess, in the lore now. Like, they're specifically not the same thing, no matter how you look at it. Just because, it, like I said, in the game mechanics, they consider Ranged and Mage different. One of each will give you a 2% buff, two Ranged will give you a 1% buff, so... This made sense. It really should have been how it was to begin with. But it could just be because of how the plot of Shadowbringers was set up as why we only had four. But I don't know. It could have also been a rush job or something. But the fact that we're getting five now is good and really should have how it always been. And then they announced trust additions. And they didn't really say much about it except for the fact that we're getting... Istinian as a trust, which will probably play into the story is all. And all I have to say on that is small block cottages. Moving on is the gold saucer, and they're doing a new game on the level of mahjong, which could be Blitzball because people really, really, really want Blitzball, or it could be something else. Who knows, I, I didn't really say anything, but it has to be something complex like Mahjong and would use a lot of work. So it's something big, but also Mahjong technically isn't big because it's just poker, technically. But there's a lot of rules in that, and so like, what exactly that mean could be taken several different ways. It could be, I don't know, Blitzball's not off the table, but I do have my doubts because just theoretically Blitzball is a lot more than Mahjong. Like just think back to playing Final Fantasy X Blitzball and how much really went into that. How much is going to go into this version of Blitzball if it's Blitzball. So what it actually is who knows. But uh, I, I, it might be Blitzball. I'll give people that but we'll have to see. 
And then, but, so, but less of what we have to wait and see and more just Doom has already been put into place is Farms. Or as I call it, Final Fantasy Story 2 Valley Edition. I, I will spend all of my time on the farm depending on how they do it. Like if it's not like kind of like Facebook farm game where you're waiting hours and hours. If it's more like Stardew Valley, I will. Oh my god, I'll spend so much time there. Oh my god. Oh my god, so much time. I, I will be addicted. I will never break my 14 addiction if they get this idea right. Farm, the island, whatever you want to call it, it's, it's going to be amazing. All your minions can run around, so I'm going to throw a billion minions everywhere. It's And then there was someone in Novice Network had a really, really good idea. Depending on if we get Beastmaster as a limited job... All of the beast we tame can be put on the island. That is a really good idea that if we get beast that we could put our all the beasts we train on the island. That would be really cool and just seal the deal. And then they went on to finally announcing Ishgard housing. The moment we started doing the restoration me and a lot of other people called it that the Foundation Restoration was going to lead to us getting housing there. Everyone who doubted us, we deserve an apology because some people got really, really personal with their attacks. Though I guess that's everything with communities is that some people get really, really personal. But like... People were really angry that some people would even suggest that Ishgard restoration would lead to Ishgard housing, even though it was really obvious. Especially because Istinia needs to burn all the small plot cottages. But th this was guaranteed, like we all knew this was coming. Something else we knew was coming eventually, but we weren't entirely sure when because at least since Stormblood, they've been talking about squishing stats. But now, finally, they're actually putting it into effect. And it's going to be effectively, according to them, an 80% stat squish. An attack that does 50,000 damage will now only do 5,000. Or no, 10,000. They said 10,000. So yeah, an 80% stat squish. That's... That is huge. Like, and it's only going to really affect 51 through 80, and then 80 plus is going to be a normal curve. But still, that's, that is crazy huge, but it makes sense given their reasoning. Like, they gave the reasoning of bugs is that they're getting close to overflow values, which that I can understand. That's, that is a really good reason of they physically cannot get the system to handle bigger numbers than we're getting. Especially when you consider what the tw the final near raid has a boss with 440 million HP. And then when you really, really consider that we're going to still have to go up, we have to progress to higher numbers. Get getting higher than 440 mil we would probably see an enemy with 1 billion, or even multiple enemies with over 1 billion HP in the next expansion without a stat squish. So this was really kind of needed for the system. But also they gave the reason of flying text getting too big. Which no, for me it's not too big. Let us adjust the size even, but they also said it's because like, the graphical intensity it's, it's going to break stuff. Again, another reason bugs that's legitimate. But if it's like for us getting too cluttered up. No, I like my flying text. I want to make it bigger. I want to move it off to the side so I have a running total of all my numbers. So I could see them better. And like I, I would... There's a lot of stuff that I want with the flying text. That I would just go hog wild with. But the fact that they're squishing... 
it makes sense. I'm, I can't be angry about it, even though I was really happy when I finally started getting 100k crits on Dragoon. And now that's just gone, it's going to be a 20k crit. And that That is kind of upsetting, but at the same time, what can you really do? They kind of had to change things in some way without just letting the game fall apart even more than it's already falling apart. They literally built this game on the back of a corpse. So the fact that it's running at all is a miracle. And on that stat squish aspect too, they're also getting rid of belts. Which is huge, because as a raider, having to spend six weekly clear books to get a belt if I didn't have to get the tombstone belt was really annoying. Where accessories are only four books, belts were an extra two weeks of rewards I had to put towards the belt like yeah maybe if I got a drop that means I could put those books towards something else but at the same time it really didn't help anyone they were just in the way they didn't show up at least rings and bracelets and all that do show up on your character I even have a necklace part of my glamour for my dragoon I used the the one scarf or, well, I used to before this glamour covers it up, so it really doesn't matter anymore. But, like, I did use the necklace, the one necklace from the, the, the Shadow of Mock Raid, that necklace, the handkerchief or whatever. I did use that a lot, so I do use accessory glamour. So getting rid of belts all around is just really, really good. And also, it spawned the absolute best memes. So many jokes about Nomura and his belts that the, the Calamity Salvager, when 6.0 hits, is going to look like Lulu because her costume is like 90% belt. Like, there was so, so many good memes about removing belts. It, uh, I laughed for hours and it. it's, it's great. So it's go both great. As a raider, great as a casual player because that's less gear you have to keep up on. And just great as a joke too. So many, so many, so many good memes. I, I, but yeah, it, it's great all around. I'm, I am glad they're getting rid of belts. And the whole worry about the materials going missing, who cares? Like, Materia from Shadowbringers is going to be worthless once we get into the next expansion. Unless we're keeping grade 8s for Shadowbringers and they're going to condense in the stat squish, going to condense Materia too. I didn't even think of that. The stat squish might affect Materia. And so the new expansion might still use grade 8s. So maybe we do want to stock up on that. I don't know. Huh. But uh, moving on ahead, we have Data Center Travel, which sounds super messy from how they described it because it's going to involve logging off to transfer you. So it's probably going to be like really broken and really messy and probably like super limited, like once an hour, just because of how limited it's going to be. Like the system genuinely cannot handle this, it sounds like. So the fact that they're getting it working at all is going to be a miracle. But also, this is a step towards the mega survey everyone seems to want. But also, a lot of people don't want because they want to keep a Balmung where Balmung is. But uh, depending on how they implement this one, it could be really cool, but it also could be really bad just because of how limited it might be. Can you even do content with people when you world visit or data transfer visit? The uses might be purely purely on the social side and so anyone wanting to do like cross data center raiding will be out of luck but to, it there's a lot of ifs in the air of once again we need to see them describe the full implementation we need the full list of details and from there we can decide whether or not it's actually good to have but what is also definitely, definitely good to have is we have the 5.5 release date 
and also the release date of the PS5 beta. I actually thought this is where they were going to also announce that it was finally, finally coming to Xbox, but nope, just PS5 beta. But really cool though is PlayStation 4 owners get a free upgrade to the PS5 version. Most people are probably already playing the PS4 version on their PS5s if they have a PS5, but now it's an official PS5 version, free upgrade, free just being better. Hopefully it is actually all really, really good. They are touting really fast load times, which I have no reason to think they're wrong, just because I hear that the PS4 version on PS5 is really fast and it comes with 4K support, so that's also really cool, which means 4K support for PC is gonna be much more supported probably. I just, all around it's a good thing in general. I'm just really surprised that there wasn't some kind of announcement of, hey, we're coming to Xbox. Just because that's another thing people really, really have been expecting, etc., etc., etc. And just, it's been, in the pipeline, quote-unquote, for a long time. But it just, I guess it's not gonna happen. Maybe they decided it's too late in the game's life to bother with an Xbox version. But I don't know, it, de it depends on what their plans are past the Endwalker expansion. How many exp expansions do they want to do? Do they want to just do one more, have a 7.0 be a nice big adventure? Do they want to go to 8.0? At that point, I think if they wouldn't go to 8.0, it would be good to do a final or uh, to do an Xbox version. So just stopping at PS5, I don't know. I, I maybe they're still just unable to bring it to Xbox. Maybe there's some kind of server issue. Who I don't know. That would have to be something that you have to talk to them about. But I'm still not entirely convinced that it won't ever come to xbox but the hope dies a little i don't have an xbox i've never even owned an xbox console but getting more players into the game is always good so getting it on xbox would be cool but i guess i don't know there's maybe there's no hope of that and then finally they ended off with the announcement of eight person mounts and the the lunar whale as a mount that we that if you pay for the concert that they're planning you will get the lunar whale and final fantasy 4 minions of ridia rosa and edge i am extremely tempted just because it sounds like a really cool novelty to have i didn't really care about the other like paid mounts and minions but the fact that we're getting the Lunar Whale, I'm not even that big a Final Fantasy IV fan, but this still got me really kind of excited that like, oh man, think of all the stuff they could do with eight-person mounts, the kind of mounts we can get. And I kind of just really do want the Lunar Whale. It looks pretty cool, even if I don't have all the people, all the friends, the, the, the people to fill out an eight-person mount. But it's still really cool that they're doing it nonetheless. Uh, I'm considering it, but I don't, know, I don't really have a use for an eight-person mount. It's just the po the possibilities have me more excited than the actual lunar whale, I'd say. But the lunar whale itself is still pretty cool. Yeah, that's basically all the stuff I wanted to talk about from Endwalker. I gave myself a night to sleep on it before I actually talked about it, and really came out of this thinking. You know, they really didn't answer a lot of questions. But the fact that they are doing two, that they announced they're doing a second event in May, kind of made that make a lot more sense, because across three fan fests, the first usually is just the hype. They reveal one or two things, and then they get the hype going. The second one reveals a lot more, and it's just like the big super event, and then the third one surrounding it out. Not as hype as the second one, but still just rounding out everything we knew, etc, etc. So really, yeah, it there wasn't really all that much to me. But what we did get, I did like for the most part. 
and especially the farms, I am... I am so afraid of what farms are going to do to me. And I'm hopeful for whatever the melee job is. I... I... There's a lot. We'll see. We have until May. We have all the way until May to marinate and really think on all the info we learned. But I guess until then, we just wait and hope that the developers get time to just pound out all the details and make something amazing. I'm looking forward to the future and everything Endwalker is going to give us. But until then, take care, and may the power of Ananid Hogs lay waste to your enemies. And thank you to all my patrons. And an extra, extra special thanks to Arya Deva, Ethan, Ethan Olson, Evan, Jamie Cotterell, Kyle Steinhauser, Nyaufi, and Valet LLC. Thank you all for watching, and if you'd like to join in the patrons, the link is down in the description. And you can join the public Discord, also in the description. Thank you for watching.